What's up guys, welcome to the video, my name is Jean, spelled like Jean. I just finished Crushing It by Gary Vaynerchuk, and in this video, we're gonna review it. Welcome to episode two of Books and Barbells. If you weren't here for my first Books and Barbells, it was probably like a year ago, but basically I want to combine two passions that I have, which is reading and which is fitness, and bring them together because the fitness space kind of has this idea idea that they're all like meatheads, right? That, that all they care about is lifting heavy weight, bro. And I want to combat that because I believe that fitness is a tool that is used to better your life and Reading is a tool, is an idea, is a skill that you can use to better your life. And when you put them together, you're sharpening your body and you're also sharpening your mind. So, you're gonna see me talk about the book and then you're gonna see me work out and then I'm gonna talk about the book and then I'm gonna work out and it's just gonna be kind of going both and it's kind of feeding both worlds, which could be a total disaster, clashing of worlds that don't belong, or it's just something fun that I wanna do. Today for the Olympic weight lifting section of Wednesday, we are doing two hang power cleans every minute for 15 minutes. How are you feeling about it? I think I'm gonna get pretty hard today. Okay. I don't know what to expect. I've done a hang power clean for 215. I think I can do that for two, but we'll see. Let's get into it. So first thing, a little bit about the author. The author, like I said, his name is Gary Vaynerchuk. He has a YouTube channel, but that's not where he got his start. If you don't know his story, basically he went and he decided he was gonna help his family raise their business. So he started something called Wine Library where they were taking their wine shop and it was like discount wine or something. He was putting it online, he was talking about wine, he was telling his expertise on the subject, he was making YouTube videos about it. He raised the net worth of his company from like maybe a million or something like that to like multiple millions, I think like 60 million, before he decided to leave and start his own thing. He is on YouTube, he has a vlog called The Daily V, he also has Ask Gary V, he also uh, has Vayner Media. He all, he's all over it. He's kind of crushing the online personal brand world. A couple years ago in 2009, he put out a book called Crush It, which in full disclosure, I didn't read yet, but that basically, that was like the manifesto on how to create a personal brand. And so many people have come out of reading that book. People that maybe you have heard of, like Lewis Howes, Sean Duras, just to name a couple. Crushing It was a book he released last year, basically saying that these concepts they were ideas and they were how he built Wine Library before. Now they are tried and true methods on how to build a personal brand. So that is the idea of Crush It. Gary Vaynerchuk living out what he is writing and I was very excited to get into the book. When I do these emails, I don't really make big jumps. I start off at a lightweight and I add maybe 10 pounds each time. Because at the end of 15 minutes, I started with 95 pounds. Adding 150 pounds on a 95, that's gonna be 245 pounds, which I don't actually think I can get. So by making these small adjustments, I'm able to become more comfortable with the weight. So I'm literally only going up by 10 pounds each time. In the dirt, say it again, man, and that's a reverse. Uh, uh, never yeah. rehearse, jump in it first. Call up the nurse, put the beat in the hearse. Uh, uh, this is absurd. Take the berserk, don't get on the tracks, man, and they better swerve. Don't got a nerve, man, I never curse. Just casting these spells when I'm spelling these words. That's real, that's real, that's too that's real. Too real. I've been rose about, I need a new deal. New Trying deal. to figure out what I should do still. Do still. Really never waiting here too still. Too still. I don't even know what I should say at all. Should I jump on in? Should I get involved? Get involved. God, God surround me, they love the talk. I take it all with a grain of salt This work that I'm doing, they never see through it And all of this rap that I see that they ruin I came in the game and I'm trying to undo it And still they all say they don't know if they're stupid I got So the book comes to us in two parts The first part is kind of like what he said in Crush It in new words And what he's learned in the nine years since he wrote the book And it's it's very practical ways to build your personal brand. He actually lays out eight essentials, and then he has stories from people who after reading Crush It, um, apply it to their life, and now they're crushing it. He adds that, and that's pretty much the bulk of the book, is people's stories. So you got like a little nugget, maybe a page and a half, two pages of what Gary is saying, and then it's like four pages of someone's story. I, I definitely see myself reading this book again, and maybe just kind of skipping the stories and, and going through all the main parts. But the first part, he lays out eight essentials, and I'm gonna read what those eight essentials are. We've got 
Intent, authenticity, passion, patience, speed, work, attention, and content. So let's get a little bit deeper into what each of those things mean. So intent is, what is your intent in working hard? Is it to make a lot of money? Is it to be the best? Is it to be on top? Or do you want to, you know, bring a service or a good to help people? Do you believe that good always wins? Do you believe that you provide these things to help better the cause of humanity, if you will, if you want to get very grandiose with it? But what is your intent? And, and if your intent is to make a lot of money, that's not a bad thing, but just don't pretend like you're out there for the good of others if you just want to make a lot of money like like what is your intent know your intent and live out of the intent because the next thing is authenticity if you're out there and you're you know he, he has a big thing where he talks about like he hates the people out there who call themselves life coaches and they're like 27 years old um, I'm 28 years old but I've never gone and called myself a life coach I believe that I'm still figuring this thing called life out every single day. But the other, the life coaches out there, you know, who have never even lived life and they're just saying, oh, I'm an expert in this field and I know how to do this and I am an entrepreneurial coach and I am this, I am that. It's like, no one believes you. And maybe they do for a little bit, but you'll eventually be found out. Like you need to be authentic saying, I'm figuring this out, figure this out with me. The next one is passion. You have to love what you do. If you're just getting into something because that's what everyone else is telling you to do, then why try to pursue your own thing? Just stay at a job where you don't have to make those decisions and you just have to listen to someone else. If you're making your decisions based on what everyone else is telling you to do and you're not passionate about it, there's no point. The next thing he talks about is patience. You need to have patience. This is gonna happen overnight. He tells a lot of stories about people saying, when's my big break gonna come? I'm putting this blog out, I'm putting this out, I'm putting this vlog out, I'm putting... And it's just, it's not gonna happen. You're slowly, by putting in the work, by putting in the work, you're gonna reach out and affect more and more people, but it's not gonna all happen at once. But the next one he says is speed. When the moment is right, you need to be able to act. You need to make the decision and go for it. You need to go all in. And he says he loves a good dichotomy because there is a patience, but it's not a patience doing nothing. It's a patience of while you're still waiting, you're still moving. While you're waiting on this, you're doing this. While this is not, not churning a lot, but going, you're working on this thing. So when the moment's right and those things collide and connect, you can run with it patience and speed. Work is the next essential. You need to work. If you want to build a personal brand, it's not just going to happen. People aren't just going to listen to you for the sake of listening to you. They need to have a reason to listen to you. And if you're the hardest worker in the room, you may not be the most skilled. You may not be the most attractive or the best or whatever, but if they cannot deny your work ethic, there's something there. You will have 100% control of how much work you put into it. The next one is attention. Pay attention to what is happening. Look at the trends. Look at the apps that people are going on. Look at what is most downloaded. How are people releasing content? Whatever. Pay attention to that. Don't just be stuck in your ways on a single platform. Don't be married to any platform. My biggest platform is YouTube, but if this were to crash tomorrow, would I be able to survive on other things? Pay attention to what is trending, to what is happening. And the last one that he talks about is your content. Your content's gotta be good, right? You gotta keep on working to make your content good. And then the second part of the book is individual platforms. He talks about Instagram, he talks about podcasts, YouTube, all these different platforms. If you wanna make your pillar, like your mark, this is where I am, this is where my main area of expertise or my main content or my main whatever like how do you navigate those platforms because someone on facebook is not looking for the same thing as someone on twitter they're very different platforms and you have to know how to attack them individually twitter is going to be like updates quick what's going on what's happening facebook is like hey, let me share this i'm interested in this looking for recommendations here they're different they're different platforms with different reasons why people log on to them and so you need to know that know the pulse and use that to your advantage I just did a 24 song in a fist huh? in a filter they already know my name at the show she gon' wanna do shit she can hang just to tell a friend to tell a friend oh be there I shoot my shot how is that birthday workout I mean that barbell 
<laughs> I didn't finish. It's been so long since I haven't finished a workout. Excuse me, that's me. Ah. But I finished on the time cap. You finished? Yeah. Nice. I didn't do any burpees either. <laughs> but good job. Huh. What did I take away from reading Crushing It? The first one is what he talks about on his YouTube channel all the time, and that is document, not create. I feel paralyzed sometimes because I know that I am not the foremost expert on CrossFit, on fitness, on macros, on diet, on lifestyle. I'm not an expert at any of those, but I do know more than I did last year, and I definitely know more than I did two years ago. So if I can document what I'm learning, if I can show what I'm learning and share it with me two years ago, no one can deny that from me, right? So even though I may not know as much as the experts, I know, I know more than I did. And if some of you guys are where I was two years ago, you're gonna learn from the knowledge that I have gained, although I'm not an expert yet. And so many people are afraid because they're not experts in their field yet. Just start documenting your process, document yourself learning, document yourself moving, growing, getting better, and people will fall in love with that story, and then, the more you do it, you eventually become an expert in it. And then the other thing I took away is that it's not insane to want to build a personal brand. I used to feel guilty about it. My pastor would ask me, why do you do YouTube? And it's like, eh, it's just something I kind of do for fun. Or, you know, someone else, oh, you have a YouTube channel? But like, yeah, you know, kind of sheepishly, like, shy away from the conversation. But no, like, it's not insane to want to build a personal brand. So many people have made success doing it that it's not this weird, crazy thing anymore. It is becoming normalized. And to read an entire book and to read so many stories about people who took this crazy idea and this crazy concept and just want to create and now they've made a personal brand and now they get brand deals and they get this and they get that. Like it's not insane and it's not unheard of and it's not ridiculous that I want to do that. So it was a very encouraging book. It was just right, like it's, it was crazy to read a book that was so in line with what I've thought but didn't have like anyone, you know, if you're even thinking about building a personal brand, if you've got something where you want people to follow you and follow your journey, I highly recommend the book. So the positives for today. I got a hang power clean two rep PR and it was actually my one rep PR that I did twice. So positive. Yay! Negative, I got time cap, but it, I mean, I tried. It was a, a weight I was nervous about, something I knew would be hard. I went for it, I tried it, got time cap, but I still got a great workout in, so really there is no negative to it. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Like it if you did, subscribe if you're not already. If you want to get notifications about when I upload videos, hit the bell. You know the drill, and until next time, I'll see you next time. Peace.